at size. That's where this is headed. That's what everybody needs to understand. I'll read you one more thing from Judge Jones. And he wrote that the government did not bring Christ, uh, criminal misdemeanor trespass claims against this uh, rancher, Hagee. This is a decision from last summer. It's a different case, but in the same area, same issues involved. They also came after him about trespassing. He said they didn't claim him, claim that he was criminally trespassing because it believed, the federal government believed that it could not satisfy the burden of proof in a criminal trespass action. As a previous criminal action against this rancher, E. Wayne Hagee, had been reversed in the Court of Appeals. Do you understand that? All this stuff about trespass cattle, all this stuff about who owns the land. It's not about who owns the land. It's about who owns the rights, the grazing rights, the water rights that were established there. It's also about saying that they did not have criminal trespass rights. They had lost that when they tried it against another rancher. So what'd they do? They sent down, and let's get that clip from uh, Rand Paul. They sent down an army, an army of BLM agents who were pointing rifles at people all week, attacking people all week. And when protesters went down there to get the cattle that they had stolen, they were threatening to shoot the protesters. Let's play this comment from Rand Paul. He's uh, talking about Harry Reid calling the peaceful protesters against the police state domestic terrorists. And this is a real, I think, intellectual and constitutional and legal debate, but it shouldn't be about violence of arms, and I hope that the government will not be there in full arms and provoke a showdown and something terrible will happen. I hope that doesn't happen. Well, isn't that what, what the stage is being set for, and maybe because of what, what Senator Reid had just said? He not only called the Bundy family domestic terrorists, the supporters, the people who believe in, in whatever's going on out there, if they're on the Bundy side, they're domestic terrorists as well. Doesn't that sound like he's setting it up for maybe some more military action, maybe bringing some feds in there, maybe having this escalate? Yeah, I don't know what will happen. All I know is from my perspective, I have a legal solution to this. I have a bill that I introduced last year, and I believe the senator from uh, Nevada, Senator Heller, is a sponsor of this bill. This would give states more control over the land and more control over the Endangered Species Act. I would like to see the governor of Nevada and the state legislature of Nevada be in charge of trying to help preserve species but also where cattlemen and ranchers needs. Nobody in Washington really knows anything about ranching or grazing of cattle or the long history that's gone on with this. We need to take this out of the hands of Washington, but let's have a rational debate without violence, without incitement on either side. But I have a bill that would actually fix this problem. It's been in the hopper for over a year. We should ask Senator Reid if he'll let me have a vote on it. Absolutely. He understands the issue. He understands that we have out of control bureaucracies. There is nobody ever been on any ballot that I've seen from the Bureau of Land Management. I don't get a chance to vote for them. And yet they're writing laws. They're creating taxes. They're sending armies against us. We have swarms of officers who are eating out our people's substance. They have become abusive of our rights. And we have not only a right, but a duty to alter or abolish governments like that. We have out of control alphabet agencies. Rand Paul has talked about this before. I hope that bill goes through. And that is something that's in the Constitution. That's another legal argument that we need to have. The Enclave Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, says that the federal government will only have 10 square miles of the country, and that's for the District of Columbia, and whatever they need as forts and as uh, arsenals, things like that. Clearly never designed to own millions of acres of land and do what they're doing with it, which is basically using it as their private fiefdoms, trading it off to giant corporations, to foreign governments, so that they can make money under the table. Now, let me read you one more thing, because there was a no-fly zone put over this area, unprecedented that they would put something up like that, and unprecedented that they would let it last for 30 days. Now, I haven't seen whether or not this has been taken down since everything happened last week. Of course, Harry Reid says it's not over, so maybe that is still standing. But that's typically the type of thing they do when the president is visiting an area. I want to read you this story that was from an interview with Der Spiegel online. And this is from a drone operator who admits that he was ordered to kill countless innocent citizens, including children. He says after six years in the Air Force, he's starting to open up about the psychological toll that has taken on him.
He says, this is Brandon Bryant, 27, from Missoula, Montana, who killed scores of innocents, and we're going to be right back. I want you to read what he said about that. You're going to want to hear this, especially if you're in the military or law enforcement. Follow your oaths. There are higher laws. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Every day it becomes more clear our nation is headed towards an uncertain future. Nothing can ensure your family's security like an Atlas Survival Shelter. The strongest money can buy and designed to be buried up to 42 feet deep with all the comforts of home and all the protection you need. Bulletproof hatches, tamper-resistant air pipes, and a unique ground design that'll withstand a bomb. See them today at IWantThatBunker.com or call 1-855-4-BUNKER. Atlas Survival Shelters. Better prepared than scared. Attention gun owners, it's reasonable to assume that at some point you may need to defend your family from an armed attack. But is it reasonable to mount a defense without a strong offense? Infidel Body Armor goes on in seconds, is civilian legal in all 50 states, is 100% made in the USA, is veteran owned, and ships next business day for free. Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com. I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we've been talking about the breaking news. Now, of course, Paul Joseph Watson, who was on the show earlier, was talking about the White House counter-terror chief saying that confrontational children could be terrorists. 
Now, at the same time, we just had a story yesterday, a top of Drudge, showing that uh, Hillary Clinton says that she's going to be a grandmother. You know, I, I didn't even know that Monica Lewinsky was pregnant. But I guess she's going to be a grandmother and she can play that loving role just in time for the 2016. Uh, her, her child will be this adorable two-year-old about that time and uh, her grandchild. And uh, so that'll be a nice uh, little diversion for people to uh, get people to vote for her because, you know, it's all about identity. It doesn't really matter about issues anymore, or does it? I think it does. That's the discussion we're going to have. What was happening here? What was really at issue? And, of course, the other big story that we've been covering is Harry Reid talking about characterizing the people that were at the peaceful protest against the police state there at the Bundy Ranch, calling them domestic terrorists. Let's, let's hear it straight from the turtle's mouth. Go ahead, play it. Keep in mind what happened up there. There were hundreds, hundreds of people from around the country that came there. Uh, they had sniper rifles on the freeway. Yeah. They had assault weapons. That, had that was the government, weapons. wasn't it, Harry? And as the, one of the former sheriffs from Arizona said, and we had children and women lined up because what, if anyone got hurt, we wanted to make sure they got hurt first because we wanted the federal government hurting women and children. This is the deal, and it's not a good one. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. And I think that we are a country that people should follow the law. And what went up in Mesquite is not very good. I repeat, what went on up there is domestic tourism. Okay, domestic terrorism, not tourism. There we go. That's Harry Reid saying that what happened there was domestic terrorism. Putting the lie out that uh, women and children were being put up front. There were no children put up front. Uh, there were women that were walking amongst the crowd. The crowd had been there for quite some time, being threatened by the government to be shot the entire time. Nobody was threatening the government. I've seen pictures of one guy up on the overpass that had a gun. There were SWAT teams down there, not only pointing guns at people who were unarmed down below, but threatening to shoot if they did not leave the area. But they would not leave the area. It was either get the cattle or be the cattle. That was really the issue that was there. But if he's going to characterize these people as domestic terrorists, then what does that imply? Does that imply that they could use drones to shoot the crowd next time? Let's talk to, uh, let's, let's take a look at what a former drone operator is saying. And I was talking about this in the, in the last segment. This is a guy who was a drone operator. This is an interview that's from uh, Spiegel Online. Brandon Bryant, 27, from Missoula, Montana said that he killed scores of innocents. That's what he said. He could not take orders anymore after following orders to shoot and kill a child in Afghanistan. You want to talk about really what's going on with children, Harry? Let's talk about this policy that you and Obama and many Republicans support. He knew that following the orders was wrong, but the very fact that he had been ordered to murder people who it was clear to him were innocent, it told him that he was fighting for some very bad people. He said, the very first time I fired a drone missile... He said, I killed two men instantly and cried all the way home. I felt disconnected from humanity for almost a week. I saw men, women, and children die. These moments are now like in slow motion. He said at one point he saw a flash on the screen. This is straight out of the movie that was entered into the Paul Revere contest, American Drone by Johan Dutoit. I, if I'm saying his name correctly, I apologize uh, Johan, if I didn't get it, D-U-T-O-I-T, exactly out of the movie. He sees a flash on the screen, an explosion, a building collapsing on a child right next to it. And he said he had a sick feeling in his stomach. And just like in the movie, he said, did we just kill a kid? He asked the drone operator next to him. And the other drone operator coldly said, yeah, I guess that was a kid. Now he says he can't just switch and go back to a normal life. See, there really are bad guys who really are shooting children. And they are people who are pushing the buttons and executing the policies, remote control from Washington. And it won't be that long before they start doing that to people in the U.S. They had drones out there, some people reported. They definitely had a helicopter there. They definitely had a fixed wing plane that was circling the area. They had set the area up as a no-fly zone. Those aerial pictures that you see of the shooter on the bridge, he was such a threat to them, they would have taken him out instantly. He was a sitting duck. They were the only ones who had air support. We're going to be right back. We're going to take your calls, and we're going to talk about something that happened in Iran with a bank.
and a plane from America. Reported by the New York Times, so I guess we can believe it. Actually, I do believe it. We're going to be right back with that story, so stay tuned. We're on the march.